Hey everybody, it's Eric Medley at Cody M, and today we're going to be covering the second half of the video series on master-to-master -master communication with AMX Masters. If you haven't had a chance to look at the first video that deals with setting up the master-to-master -master communication on the hardware, you might want to pause this video and run watch the first one. If you're familiar with the process, then we can begin looking at how to code your master. Okay, let's set the table on our system here. We're looking at a demo of an, a location that has two buildings, building one and building two. In building one, there's an AMX system that's an NX3200, and its system ID is set to one. Over in building two, there's another AMX system, it's an NI3100, and its system ID is set to two. Both masters are connected to the same IP network, via the switch located in building one. They are able to communicate to each other and master to master has been established between system two and system one. Our client is asked to be able to control access to both buildings from a touch panel located in building one. The touch panel is currently connected over the IP network to the NX3200, which is system one. Each door has an access controller that is operated by contact closure. It's simple enough to do that with the AMX system. You basically hook the relay up to the door controller, close the contact, and the door will open. Currently, we have the door in building one connected to relay one on the NX3200 that's located in building one. Now, in theory, we could run a line from relay two all the way over to building two and connect it to the door controller over there and operate the door just fine. You would have to deal with the voltage loss uh, running over the long distance of the line and a whole host of other issues. It's obviously not a practical way to do it, and there are much better ways. The way we're going to employ will use master-to-master -master communication. We will basically connect the door controller in building two to its Netlinks master, which is an NI3100 again, system two. We're gonna connect that to relay four, and then use master-to-master -to, -master to control the door in building two from the touch panel in building one. All right, let's look at some code. This is the code that we're gonna be placing on the NX3200, which again is system ID one, over in building one. Here's the major players. We've got DVTP, which is our touch panel. It's device number 10001, port one, and it's system one. We're gonna need the relay that's on the NX3200. And so I'm gonna call that DV building 01 relays. That's device 5001 port 21, system 1. Also, I'm going to need the relays over on system 2, the NI3100. So I'm going to give that the name DV Building 02 Relays. Its device is 5001, port 8, but you'll notice here that in the code, I changed the system number to 02. Basically, that's telling this master that it needs to pay attention and deal with this device, this port, over on that system. Now we're not going to do anything overly complicated here. The point is just to demonstrate the theory behind it. Basically the, uh, the operation is going to be nothing more than the client hits a button to access the door, it will pulse the appropriate relay and the door will open. So for example, according to our drawing, button 101 from the touch panel located in building 1 is going to pulse the relay, which is DV building 01 relay, happens to be device 5001 port 21 system one, it will pulse relay one, and that will open the door over in building one. Similarly, if the client in building one hits button 102, it will then pulse the relay DV building 02 relay, which again is 5001 port eight system two, that's gonna pulse relay four. If you recall from our drawing, the reason we're doing that is because in building one, the door controller is connected to the NX3200's Relay 1, and over in Building 2, the door controller is connected to the NI3100's Relay 4. So when the client hits the touch panel, button 101, this door relay will fire. When the client hits button 102 on the touch panel in Building 1, Relay 4 will fire over on the NI3100 in Building 2. That's really it. There's nothing more complicated than that. Obviously, you can add more masters and more devices. You could do relays, IR, RS-232, any number of things that you can do. Basically, any device can be operated from system one. 
bear in mind this code is running on master one and we don't even know if there's any code over on master two it really doesn't matter while we're at it the, we have to remember the communication is two ways so for example if i wanted to add a line i could say uh, dv building o2 and then i could say io say for example i had an io contact closure on the door so that i could know when the door was open or closed i could then put that in and i could say device 5001 let's see if i remember correctly if it was port 17 if i recall correctly this is the port on the ni 200 for the ios so now that i've done that i've put this in my code and i could have a channel event uh, on this device and then I would know over in building two when they opened and closed the door over here on building one's master, I could get information that, you know, from that IO that the door in building two is open and I could provide feedback on the touch panel or however I wanted to do that. Well, that's it. That's the basics of using master to master communication in your code. The key is to try to keep the various system numbers straight and not get confused as to which master is doing what. But let's take a look at this another way. After all, sticking a master in a building just to get an extra relay that I might need is not exactly the best way to do it. After all, AMX does have expansion boxes that allow you to have the different devices you need in places. So for example, I could have used an, an EXB relay box to accomplish the same feat without having to put a master in the building. The real power of master master comes when you can take an entire system and divide the processes that the program has to take care of amongst different masters. It's sort of like multiprocessing in the computing world. Let's think about some real world scenarios. One example might be that you have a system that utilizes a media server. On the main master that has to deal with all the touch panels that are being controlled and maybe even several other IP devices that it has to open sockets for. Doing all this can make a master a little bit sluggish, especially if it is talking to a media server that happens to be rather chatty, and we all know they are rather chatty devices. It isn't that the master can't handle it, but it can operate sluggishly as it tries to manage all the different things. One of the ways to improve the overall performance of the system might be to offload some of the processing power needed to deal with the media server onto another master. Another real-world scenario that I have to give credit to my good friend Jeff Scalmi was a situation in which they were trying to work with a Jandy pool controller. Occasionally, when the pool technician would show up, if he was rewiring things, he would inadvertently send voltage spikes down the line that would damage the Netlinks processor over the RS-232 line. It made a lot of sense to install an NI700 on location so that if any damage did occur, it wouldn't take down the entire system. What I'm suggesting is using master to master to create sort of a cloud computing system between AMX masters that would allow you to split processes from one master to the other, thus making the overall system performance better, and then being able to communicate the needed pieces and parts between the masters as they come along. What I'm going to recommend in this example is let's put a virtual device in each master's code. I chose for this example 34,999 port 1. And that device is going to be in the code of each master in my system. The idea being that you would then create a dev array in the code with each master's device. In our case here, each master would have in its code a dev array with 34,999 system 1. 3499 system 2, 3499 system 3, and so on and so forth. That way, each master will be paying attention to any messages or device changes that occur on all the masters in the system. Let's take a look at how this might look in code. Once again, back in our program that's residing on the master in building 1, which is an NX3200, we see the same things again. Here's our device for the touch panel, 10001 system 1. We also have our relays that are located on the NX3200, which are 5001 21 system 1. But you'll notice this time I've commented out the, the relays that are located on 
the NI3100 that's located in building 2. We're going to use a different method to activate those relays. You'll also notice that I've now added some new virtual devices to our system. I've called them VDV, Master to Master, Portal 01, and Portal 2, Portal 3, so on and so forth. The device number for the first one is 34,999, Port 1, System 1. For Portal 2, it's Port 1, System 2, and Port 1, System 3, etc., etc., for the various masters that are in my system. You'll also notice that I've added a variable, a dev array, that basically includes all those devices. So I have a, a, a dev array that's called DDV M2M portals, and that includes all the devices I declare up here. The idea being that this, this section of code will be in the code for all the masters on my system. Once I've connected them, each master will pay attention to the other master's device 34,999. And that's how we're going to establish a cloud communication amongst the different masters on my system. So let's look and see how this works with our door system. First of all, we have the same place. We have the touch panel button event for the touch panel in building one, button 101, which was meant to open the, the entrance to building one. Now in the old example, at that point, once we saw that button push, we would pulse the relay on the master in building one, and that would open the door. But this time we're doing something a little different. Instead of pulsing the relay, we're going to pulse a channel on the virtual device we created, VDV M2M Portal 01. And I've chosen randomly, I'm going to pulse channel one. That's basically me creating an API between my system in which I'm going to say anytime you see channel one pulsed on this virtual device, I intend to pulse the relay for the door in building one. So what happens is whenever that button is pushed, I pulse the relay. Similarly, I'm going to make a new rule for myself that if I see a button push on 102, which as a reminder was the button to open the building two's door, this time instead of pulsing the relay over there, once again, I'm going to pulse the channel on my virtual device. And here again, I'm arbitrarily picking the number two. So channel one is intending to open the door in building one, and then virtual device channel two is intending to open the door in building two. So then we need to add another little bit of code. Bear in mind with this code, whenever someone pushes button 101 or 102, all the masters in my system are going to receive information telling them that someone wishes to open the door in building one or the door in building two. That's useful. Now let's look how each individual master has to handle that communication coming in. The system one that we are working on currently has just received a message from the cloud that channel one on the virtual device has been turned on. All the masters are going to receive that information, and master one just happens to be one of those that does. So how do we go ahead and implement the cloud code so that master one will do what it's supposed to do? Down here in a section that I've called portal stuff, this master, this is where I'm going to put code that's specific to things that I'm controlling from master one. In this case, of course, we want to control the door in building, building one. So whenever I see a channel pulse or a channel on event on the virtual device of all the, any portal anywhere, doesn't matter. Uh, it could be device or it could be the master over in building two or the master in building four. It doesn't matter. Whenever I see channel one turn on, I'm going to know that someplace on campus, somebody wanted to open the door in building one. Okay, this is where I put in my code to pulse the relay that opens the door. Now, that takes care of the master here, but what do I need to do to make the, the door open in building two? Well, in this case, I have created a new system that is the code that lives on the master over in building two, which again is the NI3100. It has its own code, and it could be running all kinds of different things. It could be controlling AV systems in the building, et cetera, et cetera. But also in our code, we have created 
this set of code is you might this looks familiar this is the code that exists on the other master here again it's doing the exact same thing it is creating a dev array that is monitoring this virtual device on all the other masters so here again when somebody over in building one hits button 102 we're going to see an event over here channel 2 turn on just to make sure we remember that if they hit button 102 it's going to pulse channel 2 of the virtual device and then meanwhile over on the other system we're going to get a master to master communication message saying hey device 34999 system 1 the channel just turned on and the channel number is 2 so here in the code over on the, the system that lives in building 2 I have a, a, an event just for that channel event 2 and then when that happens I know some master on the system told me that they want to open the door so I will then pulse the relay on my master here the NI3100 and I'm gonna pulse relay 4 again from our drawing remember that the door in this building is connected to relay 4 now this is a very basic example of how you can create a framework to send communications throughout your system bear in mind even though I may not be controlling door 2 over in building 4 I may need to know that information for example I may want to send a message to somebody in that building hey somebody just opened door 2 and from that I would have code over in my system ID 4 to deal with that this is a way in which you can use master to master communication to basically create a cloud system and a multiprocessor system that would be much more powerful and efficient overall. Well, that's the basics of master to master communication and how it relates to your code. Obviously, there's a lot to chew here, and you probably can take this a lot farther than I have in the example. I hope it was helpful, and I hope you have a great day.